most of the shots in that match were won through the opponent's unforced error. Okay, and we go back to that stat where 70% of points are lost because of unforced errors. So we really need to keep that unforced error count down. And you'll notice I was hitting that ball really hard at you, especially at the beginning. And you've got to be able to reduce your take back and then use that power that's coming to you just to drive it back with, rather than trying to generate your own power. So your backswing is a variable. Sometimes you need to go for that big backswing. Sometimes if the ball's coming hard, you just reduce that backswing and you just block it back and pump that power back straight back at them. If you can do that and you have that ability to so lose the backswing and go straight to just before contact and then block it back, you can actually take those balls which are coming really fast and hard at you and you can take them early, take them on and by the time they hit the ball it's bang bang and it's gone. They don't have time to recover They've hit a monster shot and it's come back just as fast. So I want you to try, especially with your nice heavy racket, on those fast shots that are coming to you, is reduce your backswing and just block it back, a bit like a return of serve. So there's three examples there where I'm hitting the huge shot and you've still got that big backswing. Okay, so reduce it just there, bang, put it back just as fast. Now when we take that racket into this position where we come out here, it's got to, you've got to feel like it's weightless. Weightless, and the racket's almost going to contact. It's pointing down because we've got to hit that ball in front of us. And when we go out in front of us, it's then going to be pointing the right way. Now you'll notice with this shot, it's a block. So I'm not looking to go low and come up and put loads of spin on it. I'm taking it to the height of the contact and maybe just slightly below and then going through the shot, finishing above. So it's gonna have a bit of top spin on, but a lot of the, a lot of the shot is just going to be flat because it is a block. We're taking that pace away from our opponent's shot, hitting that ball early and just really reducing the time it takes for us to get into the contact point. If you've got time to load up and or take the big backswing, then yeah, go for your regular backswing. But if you haven't got time and the ball's coming in fast, just go with the reduced backswing and block it back with a little bit of top spin just to make sure that it doesn't fly. It's, like a return serve. it's exactly like a return of serve, yeah. Yeah, except for the footwork. You've got time to step in and lift off the front leg. That's where you're gonna get a bit more top spin off rather than on the on a return of serve, you'll be stepping across and stamping on the shot. Okay, so step in, block back, rather than the, the big backswing. Okay. Now you're gonna to have to generate some of the power yourself and just try, try and time it sweetly. So say contact is there. That's the contact point. I need to get my racket out behind the contact, okay? Just in case it comes through early, skids through, so I'm ready. And then I'm gonna keep my racket with the sweet spot behind the contact through the shot, bang. And by stepping forward, I can keep my racket, if you see it in slow-mo, it's there, still pointing the right direction, still going the right direction, and then it's gone. So it's a really safe shot in the sense that I'm going to be pocketing the ball or keeping the ball on the strings for as long as possible and guiding it back. But I need to get that racket in the right place. If I had this big backswing on those fast balls coming through, as you're finding, you're contacting them late in line with the body rather than where you want to contact them out in front. And this, lead, this is leading you to jam up. You're not getting the top spin you want anyway and sometimes you're not getting you're getting backspin because the racket still wants to drop by the time the ball's come through. So this is going to make sure that we get underneath the ball or at least go through the ball out in front. Okay, so it's going to be turning into an off offensive shot, turning it back into an offensive shot or at least a rally shot back, but not going straight on the defense. 
by being late on the big backswing and then lifting it into a lob. Okay, so it's very much um, a good game designed to be like an aggressive baselining game, game style, where you're going to try and try and keep the baseline and keep on the baseline. If you find yourself being pushed back off the baseline, you know so this is the baseline. You'd be standing back here. You've got time to do your full strokes more often. But you're going to be losing angle on the court. You're going to be losing time on your opponent's recovery back to the middle because the ball's been able to travel all the way here and back again. If I could step in and keep the ground and keep my position on the baseline, I'm taking my opponent's time away. And if I can step in on the baseline, step into the court, then they're not going to have much time to recover. And you're going to find that they might get pushed back and then you're on the offense. Okay, so it's a, a battle for positioning. So notice how when you're coming inside the court on those last shots, you, you're pushing me back, taking my time away, but also you're getting your weight behind the shot. I felt you had more penetration on the shots. But more than that, you started coming in and hitting some volleys because your positioning allowed you to. So it opened up a huge, whole new part of the game where you could hit those shots and then consider approaching occasionally and you've got a really good volley so you might as well use it yeah. and I think it is just the fact that because you stay so far behind the baseline when you're playing it just doesn't you're never going to find your way into the net you're not going to be encouraged to go into the net but your game style suits being inside the court because if you think a bit like um, Carlos Alcaraz at the moment, he's got the big, big topspin strokes where he can push his players back. He pushes them back, he starts going inside the court. Once he's inside the court, he's got more angles, he's pushing the player around, and then he can go for his drop shot where he likes because he's close to the net, they're far back from the net. And you know, that plays into your style of play as well. Okay, so I would look for you to build your game style maybe around finding yourself in the blue. It's the difference between staying back and then, hang on, I can actually step in. I can still hit these shots from inside the court if I just reduce my backswing. But I think the big benefit of your shot and being inside the court is you've got so much spin, you have that ability to bring the ball down. Being closer to the net, you need to get the ball up and then bring it down again so it doesn't go long. And you can do that with your big topspin forehand. Yeah. And especially in doubles where you're going to be on one side more than the other. Because your backhand's flatter, being a two-hander, it, uh, it might not be as suited to that side. It's always a good idea to try and find yourself inside the court. But I, I do think having that ability to spin the ball gives you so much variety in, in the way that you can play. It gives you that adaptability as well.